To participate in snow carving is a strong back and a good tolerance for cold weather. The general public ends up seeing that art just sort of appear out of nowhere. And this is a really cool event because people actually get to watch the entire process in action. Everybody's working together, helping each other, so that at the end of the day, we have six beautiful sculptures that the whole community can enjoy. You can sit inside and hate winter, but you can get out and play in it, and it, it makes it a lot more enjoyable. We are at the Winter Art Snow Sculpting Competition and Festival down in Washington Park. Uh, this event has been going on for five years now as a partnership between the Dubuque Museum of Art and the City of Dubuque, and it is all about getting people out and about, enjoying creativity, and watching really sort of magic emerge from giant blocks of snow over a week's time in early February every year. There are many hands, many people, many local businesses that help make this event happen. There's a lot of behind the scenes, of course, planning work. And then the week of the event, we start off with having a day that is um, all about snow packing. For every sculpture that you see here, it is a dump truck worth of snow. Volunteer crew came down and built all of these boxes, which is a great big plywood form that they clamp together and then they dump snow in it and chop it up and stomp on it and add snow and stomp and snow until they're standing on the top of the box. Then they open the box up and move to the next one. That's a really hard job. You can find out how good you packed it. That's actually pretty tight. Definitely feels like a collaborative, you know, group effort. I'm really not an RT person at all. And so, but this is one thing that's just pretty interesting and pretty cool. So, it, you know, it got me out here. It's just another way to give back to the community for the little kids and the people that are walking down. I mean, it's a big deal. It's something they've never seen before. It's an amazing project and uh, Conlon has a long standing history of trying to give back to the community that's been so good to us through our uh, construction projects. Find a bunch of really good people in the building. That's what makes it a great place to live. We have lots of teams of local regional artists that come together, so both professional artists and student teams that work throughout the week to actually make the works of art happen. And then we sculpt for three and a half days so people get to see that whole process. Once you have the model, you come in and you, you usually do a layout day where you kind of find the center of the block, orient your model, figure out where it's gonna be, find some landmarks figure out what snow you don't need and just start lopping it off. That's been fun getting your anger out and just, you know, going ham at it and having a good time. Basically, it's a subtractive process where you take away everything that's not the characters, the animals or birds, whatever, um, that's underneath inside. You go from the big block of snow to this like blocky block of snow and then you have to find the form within that. This is a great opportunity to make a something big. And it can be a little bit more whimsical because it's not permanent. It doesn't last forever. And it's a great way to get art out where people can see it. I live right across the street. So every day I came over and I watched a little bit and I saw a little more progress. So it's very nice to see that, that process go from start to finish. I like the creativity that goes into them and also the time that they put into it because it's not easy to do this. We're doing a river scene. It's about the idea that the uh, river level um, is froze in the winter and underneath the river there's fish and wildlife and then above rocks on the bank and old uh, tree stumps and some of the birds use those as uh, their habitat to uh, land and look for fish that come to the surface and stuff for, for air and they swoop down and pick them out. The blocks were eight foot tall, we wanted it to a little bit a little more dramatic than that. So we cut away part of the front of the block and then put it up on top to add to give us an extra two feet. This is a nice opportunity for people to uh, experience something different in, in the winter time. See it and do it. We all get a little bit of snow in the winter time and with a little bit of imagination can use that and uh, do a lot of different things with it. We are doing a, an octopus. My teammate Rachel designed the, the piece, and it's a, an octopus um, trying to help an hourglass keep from running out, and it's broke. 
So we have an environmental statement kind of about uh, climate change and the dangers it's causing to our world and everybody that lives on it. And he's got some tentacles coming up and over and above the eight foot height we had. So we took a little box and chopped snow up just like they did the big one and added a little bit. We look like we're freezing, but the first couple days when we're cutting and moving a lot of snow, we're really warm underneath. We're quite warm. And then as you get to the finer work towards the end where you're doing more finer closing, then it's a little harder to stay warm depending on the weather and your fingers get colder, but it's just a fun process to do it. It really wows a lot of people. Always ask me all year long about the snow carving. Everybody remembers that. I've been down here every year since we started the snow carving. My team today is a conglomeration of people who are willing to take a couple days off work and hang out in the snow with me. The title of our piece is Turtles All the Way. And there's an ancient story about uh, the creation of Earth and how Earth was riding on the back of a giant turtle. And then there, that giant turtle was on another giant turtle and it was turtles all the way down. Like, well, where, where is that turtle standing? Well, he's standing on another turtle. Well, where is that turtle standing? And it's the, the paradox of infinite regression. There's always another why. There's always another place to go. That was the impetus for the sculpture. And then we tried to represent turtles that are from the environment of the river along the, the Dubuque region. So we have, you know, snapping turtles and soft shell turtles and box turtles and, and map turtles. And so they're all a little bit unique. I'm a local artist. I'm a sculptor. I like doing public work. And this is a great opportunity to kind of get out of the house in the wintertime and to showcase some of the things I can do and have fun, primarily. That's the real goal. Last year in the snow stomping part of it, we got my brother and his landscaping company and others involved. And by the end of the snow stomping, my brother looked at me and said, how do, how do you get to make a snow sculpture? He's like, can we do one of these? And I said, well, yeah, like they'll let anybody do one who wants to. You just got to sign up and give them a drawing. It turned into us trying to attempt to uh, carve a block of snow ourselves. We are making a unicorn head with uh, some flowers around the base of the neck. It's not just to do a unicorn to do a unicorn. This was about doing something that symbolized my late husband. When he was going through his treatments, the unicorn spirit was kind of our saving grace, like we're gonna get through this, you know, the unicorn will bring everything we need. We were trying really hard to make it look as close to the model as possible, and that made our second day of sculpting really difficult. Once we sort of let go and just sort of found the shape within it, then we were a lot happier and just kind of went with the flow of it. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think he would, I think he would enjoy it, so. I love the part that we have college teams to see art being created in a public space and to get to watch that interaction between what they're making who they are as artists and the public enjoying and commenting and, and being inspired by what they've done, I think is really great. I started off playing football in college and everybody kind of has that, you know, one passion that brings them like that freedom where they forget that they're alive and whatever. And when football ended for me, I was kind of struggling to find that one outlet. I came up to ceramics and I found Scott and like everything just took off and I found that same feeling through ceramics. Well, I'm from Platteville, Wisconsin, and I go to school and I work as a studio assistant. And I'm a, a fine arts major, so this is right up my alley, and I'm going to put it on my CVV and resume and everything. We have a little dinosaur going right now. Um, a little chilisaurus is what we're calling him, because he's cold. I've always kind of been interested in sculpture. Like, I have clay at my house, and I'm like, oh, let's sculpt whatever, but like, this is high-end, like, large-scale type of work, which I've never done in my life, but it's something brand new and it, it's fun. When the opportunity arose to assemble a team to come down here and do a snow sculpture, we were all really thrilled. There's always a, a sense of community in the studio, um, learning from each other in the classroom, and so to get them to collaborate on a project and also get out of the classroom and work on a larger scale than we're typically permitted to in the studio, I think is a tremendous opportunity for them to learn. We've got this loop sort of form here 
So that's something that I had been working on in my own production and research, but I wanted to incorporate the students' ideas and their thoughts on the sculpture. And so one of the students on the team um, wanted to do something dealing with the fish of the Mississippi River. And then another student was thinking about some of the content that we were interested in um, exploring. And so the sculpture, the title is Swimmingly. So we have this fish that's sort of like in this loop and it's sort of like this semester, like once things get going and you're like on a roll and you're sort of hitting your stride, but if it were a fish, what would it be to the fish? And so it's that everything's going swimmingly. All of that sort of lends itself to the process too, where we're starting out and it feels a little clunky, we're not sure how it goes, and then, you know, you start to uh, catch your stride and it's like a sculpture about the sculptural process. <laughs> We do people's choice voting every year. It's really just about bragging rights and a certificate. And there's actual like judging. We're sanctioned as the official state of Iowa snow sculpting competition. So whoever wins our event has the opportunity to go on to the national competition that happens in Lake Geneva every year. This is actually really cool. I like it. We've got good friendly competition going, but everyone's been so helpful and sharing of information and knowledge um, and tools especially. And the community of sculptors is so generous with their time and knowledge. I try to keep up that. It comes a little bit naturally, but it's also just part of the community. It's like, oh, I see you're struggling with that. Hey, try it like this. I've done this before. You know, the only way to learn how to do it is to do it. So if you find the edge of the shell. A lot of the people that are here carving uh, are just everyday people, you know, right off the street and just have a, have a little bit of a and ambition to do things like that. We're kind of a unique batch of people that do this. We share a lot of common experiences and uh, get to know each other and look forward to seeing each other year to year. And uh, we just like to expand people's, what they do in the winter time especially. Giving people the opportunity to, with the community sculpting area, to try doing it. So maybe for some kids this sparks a little bit of an idea of something else that they could do with snow at home. Um, I think it's good in any opportunity to, to have a chance to cr try a creative process just like the artists do. It's hard to want to be outside in the cold, but this was a fun way for us to get outside. This is a great way to get the kids actually motivated to do something other than, you know, sledding or random backyard activities too during this kind of weather. So we knew that you could try out the sculpting here, and we did it a few years ago, and the kids loved it. We love being able to get them out in the community and um, just seeing that there's other people doing some of the same stuff that they want to do. I think Dubuque as a whole actually engages the art community very well. We definitely have quite a vibrant scene. It's an endeavor for this many people to dedicate this much time as artists. The teams are not getting paid. They're not making any money from this. So they are here simply because they want to use their talents to bring something like this to the community. I'm happy that so many people are, you know, coming by because art needs an audience and so we've we've got that here. I was up on top and I was like looking around and like everybody driving by, they were waving at me, they're, you know, laughing and whatnot and everybody's watching. Like everybody's driving by, every single person that drives by, they're looking at it. I feel like it's enlightening to a lot of people and they don't even know it until they pass it. Art in general is just important for us and I think the more that we can display that in the community, the better it's going to be. It's you know something that everyone can enjoy. And because we're in a very prime location in downtown Dubuque, it's so easy and accessible for people to get to and walk around and I don't know how many just hundreds of hundreds of people have been down here to watch this and, and it's just fun to see I mean people get inspired by this to see something like this coming from snow which is a material that everybody knows it's just really neat to see these come to life and and every year the sculptures are always different and and what else are you going to do in the winter time <laughs>